Hello, fellow preppers. Tis I, the Rumpled One. Monday, August 20th, 2012. I've been having a, had a good day yesterday. Started on the logging. And actually, I uh, forgot to tell you, Saturday, the uh, friends of the NRA here locally had a little gathering at a gun um, store. Out in the parking lot, barbecue, gun raffles, giveaways. They didn't call me, so I guess I didn't win in the raffle. But anyway, I didn't film it because yeah, some people are a little sensitive about uh, being filmed at an NRA event. So out of respect, I didn't uh, break out the camera. But I did happen to pick up a couple nice little bumper stickers there at the... Uh, gun store, Defend Freedom Defeat Obama, and uh, Don't Tread on My Gun Rights, Vote Freedom First. And there's a lot of people here don't, uh, don't really like what Obama's up to. And I know this is talking about prepping, and some people don't think prepping and politics mix, but I think, you know, if you're a prepper, you better know about politics and you better be involved. Otherwise, you might not be able to prep because there might not be anything left to prep for. You know, I know that sounds extreme and everything, but it's just the facts. You know, history has a way of repeating itself and mankind has a way of not learning from history. Anyway, I was going through uh, my books, as I think I told you, I uh, was cleaning out and boiling up bookshelf my father and I made back in 91. I had a bunch of books and my old American Survival Guide magazines and I found some letters and I even read you one that I wrote, The Welcome to the Jungle. But I thought I'd like to share with you a couple of books, a couple more books that uh, I had back there in the 80s. Got to remember, there was no internet back then. I got this one book here. How You Can Leave the City Forever, Secrets of Earning a Living in the Country by Charles A. Peterson. Most of the information in here is dated. He pretty much is telling you, you either open a restaurant or a donut shop, something like that. But, you know, that's kind of hard because usually those places already exist. And, or maybe you have a little push cart in order to make trinkets for tourists. Or you can teach or provide some cleaning service or secretarial service. But I said the material is kind of dated. And most of the information you can get free on the internet now anyway. Might take you a little work to assemble it, but that's part of being a prepper is working. Another book, The Homesteader's Handbook by James E. Churchill. Once again, these books are old. This one was written in 74. Talk about finding land. Things have changed. Doesn't work that way anymore. You know, tools, recycling an old house, building with natural materials, you know, organic gardening, and making your own sugar and, and stuff like that. Once again, a lot of it, it's dated, and you can find the material on the internet for free, or at your local library. I mean, for the most part, buying books, these how these you know, kind of general books, to me, it's it's better if you just kind of assemble the information on your own. Even if, even if you don't know the first thing, once again with the internet, 
There's plenty of free information. We got YouTube now. There's just no reason to spend your dollars on books like that. You can go to the library. There's magazines. Let's see, there's plenty of magazines on Country Living. There's one even called Country Living. And like I said, I like Backwoods Home magazine. You know, Popular Mechanics. There's just a lot of these magazines that, you know, teach you how to build and how to fix things. You really don't need to buy a book on it. And here's one by Ragnar Benson. Live off the land in the city and the country. Now, Ragnar, he's put out a lot of stuff, a lot of books. This one was copyright 82. But once again, there's nothing in here that you can't find someplace else. So, um, I wouldn't recommend that you guys go out and buy these books. If you um, happen to run across them in the library or a thrift store, you might want them, but I wouldn't be looking them up on Amazon. Like I said, there's plenty of free information available on the internet. The types of books that I would recommend you buy, if they're specific how-to manuals, like, you know, how to fix a Briggs & Stratton small engine. In fact, I got that manual out in the shop. Those type of books, because you'll be referred to those books over and over for my uh, pickup trucks. I got the Haynes manual for the Rangers where you know when I'm working on it I'll be referring to it. Even though if you're uh, good with Google you could probably download a copy for free but unless you want to have your laptop out there in the garage um, you might want to have the book. You can always just print out the pages you need off your printer. So that's up to you. But Usually, especially if I'm traveling, I like to have the manual in the truck because having the manual in the workshop don't do me any good if I break down in the middle of the night on the highway or, you know, in the backwoods. So, that's just something to think about. I just put the manual in a plastic Ziploc bag or, or big plastic bag and make sure that way it doesn't get wet. But to me, that's just common sense. But once again, common sense ain't that common sometimes. But, you know, some people, you know, they, they like my videos. And a lot of times people ask me to write books or do more educational videos. And, I mean, I'd rather just kind of pass along the tips as I think about them. Just make a video and... You know, people that can watch them, you can send it to your friends or, you know, use what you can and pitch the rest. I was talking to my neighbor, people, he just moved in from uh, Florida, and he was talking about making a dump run. And I was explaining how, you know, people out here, they might only go to the dump once or twice a year because you can burn a lot of your scraps, but, you know, then you might just have this big burn pile that gets unwieldy. I said, just use five-gallon buckets. For your trash cans and those plastic bags you get at the grocery store, you line them with those. And you make one that puts all your mail in it, so when you go back to the post office, you can throw, the, throw that away at, at the post office. That's all legal. Now when you go to the gasoline store, convenience store, some of the stuff that you might have, uh, you know, other garbage you collected, trash from the house, you can throw it in their garbage cans at the gas station or, like I said, convenience store. They always have big trash cans out there. Or just, you know, wherever you go, you go to a McDonald's or someplace, fast food joint. They've always got big trash cans because they help people use them instead of messing up the lot. So you can save your dump runs for the big unwieldy stuff. But that's just one way of uh, keeping some dollars in your back pocket instead of spending them and it's, some people think oh you're cheating it's just like no I'm not cheating at least not my opinion but everybody likes to draw the lines for other people in fact I'll probably gonna do, do a uh, video talk about freedom because I don't think people really understand what freedom is and what freedom means 
but that's just my opinion once again. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. I appreciate it. Love the comments. Remember, I only get into the city a couple times a week, maybe, so if I don't respond quickly, it doesn't mean I didn't read it. doesn't mean I don't care. It just means I haven't had a chance to get to it. I tell you, I got a lot of firewood to make. If you watch the video from uh, yesterday when the loggers were here, you can see I got my work cut out for me. But it's uh, August 20th, got a couple weeks left in the month. And then September, that's when the rains usually start. So I got to put up some firewood. Because if I don't prepare for that fire, I'm not going to have it. It's just like everything else. If you fail to prepare today, you're preparing to fail tomorrow.